Hi, it's Stephen Caleb from Brownells, bringing you some quick tips on scope mounting fundamentals. Yeah, so what we want to cover here is the most common mistakes we see. Oh, and uh, we've seen a lot of them. Yeah, we've seen a lot of them with scope mounting. So uh, let's just jump right into it. All right, all right. What's your What's your favorite? So my favorite, or my the number one on my list that I, I saw a lot working in the gunsmith shop, mm -hmm. um, was mounting. And this one is most detrimental to accuracy. This will just make your shot groups go everywhere. Was mounting uh, your scope with the rings touching either the, the turret housing, the objective bell, that little angle right there where it just starts, or the, uh, the eyepiece here. Oh man, using it for like recoil abutment or something? Or? Uh, I guess maybe. Um, but if your scope ring is mounted right up against this housing, uh, this angle right here, where the objective comes down to the tube, yeah. right right where it meets, or if it's mounted right up against the eyepiece, it's gonna throw your shot groups off. It'll, it'll do some weird, funky stuff. So what you wanna do is leave, even if it's just a tiny gap, you wanna leave a gap between everything. Um, I, w I almost said if you can, it, it's not if you can, you have to, or your setup's not gonna work right. And that's the biggest one I see someone will come in and say, you know, my, my rifle's not shooting, the accuracy is terrible. I mounted this scope. I mounted, you know, a few other scopes. I, I don't know what's going on. And that's how they're mounting it. And that, that solves the problem. It's an easy fix. All right. Well, when somebody brings in a, a, a setup like this to me and they say it won't group, I just grab the scope, grab the rifle, and see if they rattle, you know, <laughs> if that's there's play. One. It's got to, obviously, it's all got to be mounted solid. There's yeah. a torque specs for a reason. Uh, so that's that's another big one as well. And that's fundamental, and yet still, sometimes that stuff will either loosen up or never gets tightened up properly to start with. Yeah, and then there's clearance. Uh, looking at the bottom here, if anything is, if any part of this scope is touching your rifle, then you have an issue. The only right. place your optic should be touching is the rings. If it's right. touching at the base down here, if it's touching the barrel a little bit, you know, your your eyepiece back here, obviously you won't be able to adjust, but that, that'll that do the same thing. It'll destroy your accuracy. Right, and if you slip on a lens cover on the front and it mm. wedges between the barrel and the yep. scope, not good, same no thing. bueno. Same thing, yeah. So uh, that, that'll mess it up just as bad. All right. What about the guy that comes in and says, I want you to mount this scope on my AR-15 and I want it as low as possible. Ooh, that's a good because one, Steve. over and over we say, get it as close to the bore as possible. Traditionally, that's the way to go. But on the AR-15, that is not the way to go. We see this all the time too. You know, someone will buy these rings for mounting this optic on this AR-15. In theory, yes, you can. I can take the rings off of this rifle and mount them on this rifle but I'm gonna have some issues. And we're not just talking about, you know, no. because my rear sight's on here. Whenever you mount your optic too low on the AR-15, you can't get a proper sight picture. You have to smash your face into this stock. And the reason is because on your AR-15, your stock plane is almost on the same plane as your upper receiver where your optics mount. Yeah. Whereas on your traditional rifle, you have your receiver and then there's some drop that goes down to the stock. Now, this was an, is an exception because we have a cheek piece raised all the way up, sure. but they drop down. Uh, so you can go super low on your rings and get them nice and low and still have a comfortable cheek weld. And that doesn't happen on the AR-15. Yep. That's Another thing is uh, crushing your scope. You know, your rings have the power to crush Ooh, a lot of scopes. Man, yeah. Uh, there are some rings out there that have a little bit more generous gap between them. Yeah. And um, like the uh, one, one that kind of pops into my head is the old Rock River AR rings. Mm -hmm. Those, if you didn't follow the torque specs on those, you could crush a tube easy. I've had that caller who says, my rings are defective, they don't close up all the way. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's another one too. <laughs> oh boy. That, they don't have to close up Thank all the goodness. way. Yeah, don't, don't try to close them all the way. You're no. squeezing that no. tube in a vise at that point. A lot, a lot of the manufacturers will include a little wrench to tighten up your rings with, and that's all you need. You don't need to you know, something that takes two hands. Yeah, and then uh, there's this company, I can't remember their name, but they sell a really good torque wrench. Oh, uh, Brownells. Yeah. They, uh, they sell a torque wrench that works great. Yeah, but uh, when you've got, you know, two screws on a side, you don't have to put a lot of torque on those screws. That's a lot of holding power. That scope's not gonna go anywhere. Yep, and uh, I think that covers all the 
common stuff, Steve. All the common stuff, uh, you know, outside of see-through rings and things like that. Oh, goodness. That's a yeah. whole other video. Boy, you've got to really up your game if you want see-through rings to stay in place. Yeah. Uh, but I know people that use them. People use, some people yeah. use them and, and they, they have good great. luck with them. That's weird. They're hit or miss. But You, you would think they'd be all over the place, and yet uh, somehow they work. It's, for some reason, it's, you know, not all 742s work that well. But oh. for some reason, the 742s yeah. that work actually work with yeah. see-through. It's almost like a match made in heaven. I don't know. We're getting all off on a tangent here. And you know, uh, people worry about recoil on scopes. And for a, uh, an average size scope, not a huge scope, you know, aluminum's just fine. You know, yeah. steel's not a big advantage. But if you've got a real heavy kicker and you've got a humongous heavy scope on there where inertia is going to come into play during recoil, then you might want to go with something that has a little more grab to it, a little more surface area. Yep. Or, you know. And yeah, so weight's not the only uh, only reason they make different material rings. That What he just said there is spot on. Yeah. Back in the old days, you know, Weaver uh, aluminum rings would hold about everything because all the scopes were fairly light, you know, back in the 60s, 70s. You know, we didn't have huge tactical type scopes. Yeah. Yep. So a four power scope, you could hold that on there with just about anything. Yep, and now we have, you know, some heavier optics, so yeah. we had to make some heavier duty rings. Yeah, but with a low power scope, people would shoot four or five eights with uh, weaver rings and bases on them. Yep. And they'd do fine. Shoot great. But on these humongous scopes, yeah, um, a lot of times if it's a heavy kicker, I'll go with steel, steel everything. On an AR platform, when you're shooting 5.56, five, yeah, you can get away with just about anything. Yeah. There's a lot of good aluminum AR mounts out there that are really nice and rigid. They line everything up perfectly. Yep, like this one here. This uh, Reptilia is aluminum, and it yep. is a awesome mount. So they make the whole mount out of aluminum and then use steel attachments, which yep. most aluminum mounts will do that also. And they already come at the correct height, too. Yes. So if they don't come in low, medium, and high, you don't have to worry. They come in AR height. Yep, so... Uh, that's why you see so many AR specific mounts out there is for that exact reason. Yeah. So uh, other than that, you know, use good gear to mount it with. Uh, make sure your windage and elevation turrets are aligned right if they're supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> I've level, had those level rotated your scope. 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, level your scope and uh, make sure your windage is not your elevation and vice versa. Yeah. Just makes it easier on you. And that's it. Yeah. So, uh, if, if you have any questions or comments. Or, or tips. Or tips. On mounting scopes, we'd like to hear from you. Yep. Post we can those. get into the Loctite debate some other time. Oh, man. We've already done that. We've been there. <laughs> we've done that. We've we've lost sleep. Over, can you ever talk it. too much about Loctite? No, but you can put too much Loctite. Seen it done. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.